Hey guys, this is SD. Uh, something for you guys with the solar and wind generator battery banks. I can't uh, really afford to go out and get brand new batteries. So uh, what I've done is gone down to some battery sales places and when they get these uh, older batteries in, uh, they uh, give them the core charge of these older batteries as replacements for the new ones they purchase. Some of the places that you go to, you can buy these old uh, batteries uh, for whatever the core charges. They might charge an extra ten bucks or so. But I got these uh, four uh, T125s for twenty-five bucks a piece, and the T145s uh, here for thirty bucks a piece. Uh, so it's for less than two hundred and fifty bucks. I've got a uh, thousand four hundred amp hours of batteries, or a thousand forty amp hours of batteries. Now, you can go ahead and let these all tested out good. No, none of them had a bad cell, but uh, if uh, you want to try to rejuvenate these, there's a lot of different things out there on the market. Uh, I'm a firm believer of not putting any type of additive into the uh, electrolyte uh, to try to desulfate the batteries. Now, for a long time, I've been a member of an uh, alternative energy uh, group it's called uh, IAECforumco.com. Stands for uh, Alternative Energy Center. It's an international group. Uh, they have all sorts of helpful information in the site. It's free to join. It's all open source. Nobody charges you anything for anything. A lot of the guys there will come out and help you uh, online if you're not real good at building things. Uh, electronically but here's what I've got here this is what's called a solid-state pulse motor uh, this one's actually pictured in the forum there's a video that shows you how to, how to build this I'm using this running off of two of the uh, 6 volt T145s as a power source and uh, right now I'm pulsing two other T145s that started out at 12.85 uh, and uh, while I was doing yard work and stuff, this has been running lower. You have a potentiometer here. There's an inline resistor here. It's 100 ohms. Uh, and then you have four, excuse me, five uh, transistors. And I've got uh, 33 ohm resistors here. And a little on off switch. And there's a the little homemade coil. Now there's uh, six wraps of number 18 magnet wire. All of them are 100 feet long. Now you'll probably want to know why there's six wraps and I've got five transistors here. One of those wires is what's called the trigger circuitry which runs this part right here. Now these two batteries have been pulsing uh, for probably six hours now. Started early this morning. Uh, you can adjust how much power input by you adjusting the potentiometer. This set setup right here was actually running hydrogen cells before, so it puts out quite a bit of power. This is actually the power block right through here. This is a hot wire right here. On the end of each of these transistors is diodes, blocking diodes, so the power can't flow back into the transistors. And I've got four of them hooked up there, and they're uh, 5408. They're like uh, six amp uh, diodes on each one. But again, this batteries, uh, they started at uh, 1239 or 12.89 uh, uh, this morning. And right now I've got them up to 15.37.38, it's right in there. Now, I'll get a camera, but what I usually do is cover them up with a uh, paper towel because these will actually start bubbling up. And what it's doing, it's not charging on the positive side, it's charging through the negative side. And this will break up that sulfation that's down inside your batteries. And there's a few other little things to do, but let me show you how these uh, batteries are bubbling away. i got to get a light on the subject here. If I can get the camera right down in there, you can see what's going on. I see them just bubbling away. That's another reason I put the napkin on there so it doesn't make a mess. Each cell. Now, as long as you have uh, good cells and nothing shorted out, pretty much you can restore the batteries, no problems at all. 
but there's a few uh, little things else that you need to do. Um, what you'll end up doing is assigning a number to each of these uh, batteries and as you you know, charge them up I usually like to bring them up to about uh, 15, 10, 15, 30 and then adjust the potentiometer here down so it doesn't increase but it doesn't decrease okay and it's a real slight uh, mo movement there once you get them up to like uh, 15, 10, 15, 30 you back off the pot, just let them sit for a few hours, and then you go ahead and shut the system down. You want your batteries to completely rest, uh, not being charged for uh, 10 hours, and record that ending voltage. So there's a lot of information you're going to uh, put down, like on a spreadsheet. You're going to put down the information of what your maximum voltage you uh, achieved uh, while it's being pulsed, then the 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 voltage max reading at rest and then you want to take like an old car headlight and hook up to it and uh, record its lowest uh, voltage while you're watching it, uh, it might burn uh, six eight hours but uh, you'll see it go down to a certain level at the bottom and then it'll actually start to come back up that's it, it's burning through that bottom insulfation this pulse motor here will actually uh, burn through the higher end sulfations. So each time you do this uh, and you start watching your spreadsheet, you're going to see that your batteries uh, takes longer to discharge and it takes less time to charge them back up. And you do this three, four, five, six times, whatever it takes, and you, you, almost, you almost have like a uh, brand new battery. But I go through the banks and uh, do this and watch it and you'll see like my other four batteries now on the uh, uh, Missouri wind and solar they're sitting at uh, 13.7 I got 8.9 amps going into it off the solar panels those I'll probably uh, do those next week it takes a few days to do each set but I disconnect these batteries from the rest of the setup using two to run the system and two to charge the system but like I say it works really good and if you're on a real tight budget and uh, you don't have the money to get brand new batteries, this is one way you can do it. And if you guys want to know how to uh, build one of these, just go to the International Alternative Energy Center. That's IAECforumco.com. And you can uh, go through there. You can't see any of the videos until you join, but like I say, again, it's free to join. And then you can actually look on the left hand side, there's all different types of information. Hydrogen cells, uh, wind generators, uh, solar panels, batteries. There's a battery bible, tells you what's called a C20 rate. Tells you how, how to charge and discharge the batteries so you don't do any damage to them. Just all sorts of information, but uh, I figured you guys might like to know uh, how, how we take care of these batteries and give it a try. Uh, I've had a friend that had a, a old car battery. He took it down to an automotive store. I won't name the name of it, but uh, he said the battery was shot and uh, he was going to buy a new one. I said, let me have it. I messed around with it for about a week and gave it back to him. When I uh, gave it back to him, it was reading 15.8 at rest. And then he took and uh, loaded it up in his car and took the battery back to the same dealer and uh, asked them to check the battery out and they said oh this battery is great uh, you got a problem with your alternator or something what's wrong and it was the same guy that checked the battery before and said this battery was shot so it's just something to think about if you guys want to know how to do this just let me know and I'll get you in the right direction alright we'll see you later